Our top focus is on Sudan. The ongoing civil war in the country was at the center of a heated debate in the United Nations Security Council on Monday. The 15-member council voted to adopt a resolution calling for immediate ceasefire in the war-torn nation. Sudan is in the grip of a brutal civil war that started as a power struggle between the country's army, led by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, and the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or the RSF, led by Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo. Fourteen out of 15 members of the UNSC voted in favor of the resolution calling for a ceasefire, except for Russia. Russia, which is a permanent UNSC member, vetoed the draft resolution prepared by the United Kingdom and Sierra Leone. Even Russia's ally China voted in favor of the resolution. Russia's veto triggered a war of words at the Security Council. Russian envoy justified the veto by describing the resolution having post-colonial flavoring. He accused the UK of trying to avoid any mention of the legitimate authorities of Sudan. Britain, on the other hand, called Russia an enemy of peace. The British Foreign Secretary, in an angry response, said it is shameful how the Russian President Vladimir Putin is spreading conflict and violence in Africa. We agree with all Security Council colleagues that the conflict in Sudan requires a swift resolution. It is also clear that the only way to achieve this is for the warring parties to agree to a ceasefire. We believe that the Security Council's role here is to help them to achieve this. However, this should be consistent and open and should not be done by imposing upon the Sudanese through a council decision the opinion of its individual members flavored with their post-colonial flavorings as to how the future country should be. One country is the blocker. One country is the enemy of peace. This Russian veto is a disgrace and it shows to the world yet again Russia's true colors. Shame on Putin for waging a war of aggression in Ukraine. Shame on Putin for using his mercenaries to spread conflict and violence across the African continent. And shame on Putin for pretending to be a partner of the global south while condemning black Africans to further killing, further rape, further starvation in a brutal war. For the 19-month-long Sudan war. Prior to this, three resolutions have been adopted by the Council. The first one was passed in March, which called for ceasing hostilities during the holy month of Ramadan. Now, Russia was the only one to abstain. Second was a resolution adopted on the 13th of June, and that demanded the paramilitary RSF to halt siege of the city of al Fasher in Darfur region. Again, Russia was the only one to abstain. Now, the last resolution was adopted by the UNSC on the 11th of September, and that aimed to renew sanctions on the arms supplies on Sudan's Darfur region. This resolution was unanimously adopted. Now, these resolutions have had little impact on the ongoing conflict in Sudan. That continues to intensify despite the efforts for peace. So any positive impact from the latest resolution was also unlikely, even if it would not have been vetoed. However, it highlights how Russia could be viewing the war in Sudan. Russia has been reportedly hedging its bets by aiding both sides in the conflict. Earlier, it was reported that Russia's Wagner Group, now Africa Corps, was supporting the RSF. However, more recently, Russia has seemingly switched sides and is viewing the Sudanese army as a more strategic ally. Sudan's army is also reportedly backed by Iran, which is also Russia's partner. And the cooperation with the army will also allow Russia to counter Ukraine's influence in Sudan. So Russia's veto is signaling about which way Moscow is leaning. Sudan's army has welcomed Russia's veto at the Security Council. Now, Sudan's army-backed foreign ministry said it is viewing the gesture as support for the independence and unity of Sudan and its national institutions. Russia's veto has also been condemned by the United States. The U.S. President Joe Biden spoke about the Sudan war at the ongoing G20 summit in Brazil, where he urged external actors against arming Sudan generals. Sudan, 
received one of the world's most tremendous serious humanitarian crisis. Eight million people on the brink of famine. This deserves our collective outrage and our collective attention. External actors must stop arming the general and speak with one voice to tell them, stop tearing your country apart. Interestingly, the development also coincides with the first visit of U.S. Special Envoy to Sudan. The U.S. Envoy met Sudan's Army Chief General Burhan in Port Sudan. He discussed the flow of humanitarian aid and the need for a ceasefire in Sudan. Share the aspiration for this war to end as soon as possible, uh, to see an end to the horrific atrocities as we've seen recently in Jazeera State and elsewhere, uh, and that we can continue to build uh, to the aspirations of the Sudanese people to an inclusive democratic future. Since April of 2023, over 24,000 lives have been lost and over 11 million have been displaced due to the war in Sudan. The conflict is reportedly being fueled with the involvement of foreign players. Sudan's army has accused the UAE of providing support to the RSF, while the RSF alleges countries like Iran and Egypt are backing the army. Now, reports have suggested that weapons linked to multiple nations are found in Sudan. And the efforts of brokering a peace deal led by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia have failed. The warring parties have intensified their aggression in an attempt to seize more areas. Now, could the brutal fighting in Sudan see an end? How will the involvement of foreign players complicate the efforts? And now to discuss this further, we have with us Ben Aris, editor-in-chief of the Bene Intelli News and a political analyst. He is joining us live from Berlin. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure to be here. Right, let's jump right in. What are the key reasons behind Russia's decision to veto the ceasefire resolution? And how do these reasons align with Moscow's broader geopolitical and strategic interests in Sudan and in the region? I think the first and most obvious thing is that Moscow is interested in uh, Sudan. has been one of its, its friends, long-standing friends since Soviet times, and that uh, the Kremlin continues to support that, and they want to keep Sudan as their close ally, if not you know, proxy in, in northern Africa. Uh, consequently, they don't like meddling uh, by the international community. But secondly, there's a wider um, point here, in so much as the UN has you know, passed this resolution, not the first one, I'm calling for a ceasefire. But we've been down this road before, in so much as the UN also had a resolution that mandated um, NATO uh, forces to support um, the rebels in Libya. And what happened then was that the, the, the Kremlin has this general principle of uh, non-interference in sovereign states. And in the Libyan case, it objected to military to action taken by NATO forces, um, taking sides in an in a internal conflict. Um, but it decided to abstain. It was under a lot of pressure from the international community um, to bring an end to the fighting. But then that went disastrously wrong. Uh, Barack Obama admitted afterwards that it was a complete mess, that they failed to support the government, and the, and the whole country has completely collapsed. Um, Putin just gave him a speech at Valdai um, in Russia, where he was laying out his multipolar view of the world. And he has just met with Biden and made very similar points. And one of the principles of this emerging market world uh, view on how the world should be run, the multipolar world, is non-interference in states. And so the Russians mm. are taking the view that this is an internal problem. And of course, and then the ambassadors to the UN said, of course, uh, the fighting must be brought to an end. But what they're afraid of is that with a UN mandate, yes. then that mandate would allow NATO forces to go in. And that's the last thing Russia wants to see, to see NATO interfering in Africa, because it very much right. sees Africa as its backyard, as its, as its protectorate. Um, and they want to stop that. Right. And Ben, given that Russia was the only member of the Security Council to vote against the measure, how does this impact Russia's diplomatic standing and its relations with both Western nations and African states? 
Well, it's, uh, Russia has no international standing. It's a complete pariah since it invaded uh, Ukraine. And so it really has nothing to lose at all from vetoing this and marking itself out and, you know, alone in this issue. I mean, interestingly, uh, China is also a member, a permanent member of the Security Council. And in this particular case, normally China goes along with Russia or at least abstains. And I think in this particular case, um, it didn't mm. back Russia's uh, objection to this. So it does look like it's isolated. But Russia is far away, far ahead of the West in terms of building relationships in Africa. The African continent as a whole um, have at least con not condemned or not participated in the sanctions. Um, and Putin has repeatedly, and again in his speech he just gave this week, talked about the colonialist attitudes of the West. And that plays yes. extremely well in Africa. That the, the Africans remember that with very, very bitter memory. And um, when you have the French and the Italians and the Germans marching around and, and now the Americans marching around in Africa trying to revive relationships, um, they've been met with very, very chilly receptions. Whereas Sergei Lavrov, the Russian um, yeah. foreign minister, is constantly in Africa and he's welcomed wherever he goes because the Russians don't come just with you know, words of friendship, um, and they didn't have colonies. Um, they didn't colonize anything in Africa in Soviet Union times. Um, but they come with nuclear technology, they come right. with commodities, they come with grain, they come with an arms, and arms is a very important yes. part of their relationship. Um, and Sudan, I mean, as you said in your preamble, I mean, the, the Kremlin has been supplying arms to both sides, um, but it's been, you know, when... When Omar al Bashif was was running um, the country until right. um, was it 2019, that Russia was a major supplier of arms to Sudan, and it continues to be uh, a major supplier, and that's very important for, for right. both regimes, competing regimes, to keep good relations with Russia. And again, UN interference. One of the things would be to mm. to cut those arms. I think that they fuel the conflict. Um, but it's a diplomatic tool. Yes. Um, in Americans use it in the same way. It's a different. Value tool. They right. often sell arms to both sides. Right. Yes. Ben, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa and for your valued analysis and insights there. My pleasure.